Have you ever wondered why the QT interval is a crucial factor in ICU diagnosis? Let's dive into this fascinating topic. The QT interval, which you can see on an electrocardiogram or ECG, represents the time it takes for the heart's ventricles to depolarize and then repolarize, or in simpler terms, to contract and then relax. This interval is of utmost importance in the intensive care unit, or the ICU, where patients are critically ill and require constant monitoring. A normal QT interval indicates a healthy heart rhythm, while an abnormal one can be a sign of serious cardiac conditions. Now what makes the QT interval so significant in ICU diagnosis? Well, it's all about the heart rhythm. You see, the heart is like a well-tuned orchestra, with each part playing in perfect harmony. When all goes well, the QT interval remains consistent, allowing the heart to function efficiently. However, when there's a disruption, akin to a musician playing out of tune, it can lead to a chaotic rhythm, potentially disrupting the heart's function. This is where the QT interval comes into play. By measuring this interval using an ECG, we can detect these disruptions early, potentially saving lives. An elongated QT interval, for instance, can indicate conditions like long QT syndrome, which can lead to life-threatening arrhythmias. On the other hand, a shortened QT interval may suggest a heightened risk for atrial fibrillation, a condition characterized by irregular and often rapid heart rate. But it's not just about detection. Monitoring the QT interval also allows physicians to adjust treatments in real time, ensuring the heart rhythm stays as close to the normal range as possible. This is especially crucial in the ICU, where patients' conditions can change rapidly. So the QT interval is not just a simple measurement, but a vital tool in the world of intensive care. It's like a window into the heart's rhythm, providing invaluable information to physicians and playing a significant role in the management of critical patients. It's safe to say that the humble QT interval punches above its weight in the high-stakes world of ICU diagnosis. Now that we understand the importance of the QT interval, what causes it to become abnormal? Let's delve into the myriad of factors that can lead to QT interval abnormalities. Just like a symphony orchestra, the heart relies on various elements working in harmony. When one or more of these parts are out of sync, the rhythm can falter, leading to QT interval abnormalities. Firstly, stress. Yes, you heard it right. Stress can have a physical impact on your heart. When you're stressed, your body releases hormones that can accelerate your heart rate and constrict your blood vessels. This can cause a change in the heart's rhythm and potentially result in a longer QT interval. Next up, medications. Certain drugs, including some antibiotics and antidepressants, can cause QT interval prolongation. These medications can interfere with the electrical activity of the heart, causing it to beat abnormally. Always remember, it's crucial to discuss potential side effects with your healthcare provider before starting any new medication. Let's move on to electrolyte imbalances. The heart relies on a delicate balance of electrolytes, like potassium and magnesium, to maintain its rhythm. When this balance is disrupted, it can lead to QT interval abnormalities. For instance, low levels of potassium or magnesium can slow the electrical impulses in the heart, causing the QT interval to lengthen. And finally, genetics. Some people are born with a predisposition to QT interval abnormalities due to inherited genetic disorders, such as long QT syndrome. These genetic conditions can cause the heart's electrical system to malfunction, leading to a prolonged QT interval. In a nutshell, there are several factors that can cause QT interval abnormalities, ranging from lifestyle and medication to physiological and genetic factors. Each of these causes can influence the heart's rhythm in unique ways, leading to different types of QT interval abnormalities. So, anything from stress to genetics can cause QT interval abnormalities, making it a complex yet fascinating subject. Before we delve into the treatment options, let's quickly recap what we've learned so far. The QT interval, a crucial component of the heart's electrical cycle, holds significant importance in ICU diagnosis. It represents the time it takes for the heart's ventricles to depolarize and then repolarize, or in simpler terms, to beat and then prepare for the next beat. When monitored closely in the ICU, the QT interval can provide valuable insights into a patient's cardiac health. It's like a window into the workings of the heart. However, abnormalities in the QT interval can arise due to various factors. These might include electrolyte imbalances, certain medications, and inherited conditions, among others. These abnormalities can potentially lead to life-threatening arrhythmias, making their early detection and management critical. 
With these points in mind, it's clear that the QT interval plays a pivotal role in ICU diagnosis. Scene script. Understanding the problem is half the battle won. Now how do we treat QT interval abnormalities? When it comes to managing QT interval abnormalities, there's no one-size-fits-all treatment. The treatment approach is multifaceted and largely depends on the underlying cause. First, let's talk about lifestyle changes. They may seem small, but they can make a big difference. For instance, maintaining a healthy diet and regular exercise routine can greatly contribute to heart health. It's also essential to minimize stress, as it can exacerbate heart-related issues. Next up, medication adjustments. In many cases, QT interval abnormalities are a side effect of certain medications. If this is the cause, the solution might be as simple as adjusting the medication regimen or switching to a different drug. However, this should always be done under the guidance of a healthcare professional. In some instances, the QT interval abnormality might be due to an electrolyte imbalance which can occur as a result of conditions like kidney disease or certain medications. If this is the case, the treatment could involve replenishing the body's electrolyte levels, either through a change in diet or with supplements. Now, let's venture into the realm of surgical interventions. In severe cases, when lifestyle changes and medication adjustments are not enough, surgical procedures may be necessary. Procedures such as implanting a pacemaker or defibrillator can regulate the heartbeat and prevent life-threatening situations. It's important to note that these are just some of the treatment options available. The best course of action will always be dependent on the individual patient's condition and medical history. Therefore, a close collaboration with healthcare professionals is vital in managing QT interval abnormalities effectively. Remember, the journey to heart health is not a sprint, but rather a marathon. It requires patience, persistence, and a strong will to make necessary changes. While the treatment of QT interval abnormalities can be challenging with the right approach, it's certainly not an insurmountable task. So, let's take heart and keep moving forward, shall we?